Praise God. Give him another big hand. This little guy, Montgomery Choir. Did a great job. Great job. So, sisters and brothers, again, my name is Brother Nehemiah from Atlanta. Most of y'all probably know, but for those of you who don't, that's where I'm hailing from. And um, I got my two brothers, Brother Dave and Brother Anthony, who drove down with me. That's my crew right there. And um, praise God for them as well. We're going to go ahead and get started with the class, but first we want to uh, make sure that we read the law. And my brother, if you will, go to uh, Exodus, 20th chapter. Whenever you get ready. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, for I the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. All right, and let's go, if we will, to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And now let's go to Revelation 22, last book, last chapter in the Bible, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might have right to the tree of life, and they may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Amen. Amen. And the thing about it, sisters and brothers, is something that I always say whenever I stand before any group of people or congregation as it relates to the Israel of God. Um, the law is our base. It's our foundation. Without that, we don't have any real reason to be here. Amen. You know, he said in Ecclesiastes, he was going to bring every work into judgment. And that means that everything you do or everything you say, you're going to have to give an account for in the judgment. That's part of God's law. So we want to keep that in mind as we move and navigate through this, this life that we have here on this short temporary time on earth. Now, whenever I also get up, and some of you might know, but anywhere I go, standing from the rostrum of the Israel of God, I always throw my saying, my scripture, my two scriptures in that I do in every lesson, because I think it's important uh, based on who we may have in the audience and uh, based on giving you the understanding of why we do 
what we do uh, and how we do it. So let's go, if we will, to uh, Isaiah, the 28th chapter. Isaiah chapter 28. And we're going to read two verses, verses, uh, three verses, actually, uh, two verses, I'm sorry. Uh, Isaiah 28, verses 9 and 10. Verses 9 and 10. Okay, read it when you get it. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the bread. So he said, whom shall he teach knowledge? Because that's the real reason we're here. We're here to have service and enjoy ourselves, but we're here to get some knowledge about the word of God and how to save ourselves. He said, whom shall he teach knowledge? He said, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Go ahead. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. He said in verse 9, the, the ones that he shall teach doctrine and make to understand the knowledge is them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So whenever you approach the word of God system, brothers, it has to be like a child. Children are the most smartest creatures on the earth because whatever they see, they mimic. You don't sit there and have a class on teaching a kid how to read. He just listen and look at you, and all of a sudden, he know how to read. Didn't open a book or nothing. He just picked it up because that's how he, that's how smart God made us when we were born. We just pick it up. We don't have to learn, take a Spanish class or English. I got, we got a sister at the class. Got two twins. Never opened a book to teach him how to read. Those kids know English and Spanish at the same time. At the same time, because she speaks Spanish to them, speaks English to them, and they know both fluently. They don't know how they know it. They just know it. God gave that to them. That's how we have to approach the word of God. Whatever you see that it, that it is on that line, open your mind up, and you learn the word of God objectively as opposed to subjectively. Right. And as grown-ups and grown people, that's what we have to do, because some people come from different arenas, different classes of life, and you try to learn things subject to what somebody told you about the Bible as opposed to what it reads. As opposed to what it reads. So open up your mind and take the word of God in as it is read. And he said in verse 10, he said, precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. We go from book to book and we teach the word by subject and by title. And when you teach the word by subject and title, you got to read the book. But I can't learn about the Holy Ghost just reading the whole book of Genesis. I have to go to Genesis. I have to go to Isaiah. I have to go to the book of John. I have to go to the book of Mark. I have to go to the book of Revelation so I can learn what the Holy Ghost really is. Right, right. So if you're here for the first time or you might be seeing the video for the first time, we do it line upon line, precept upon precept. Genesis a little. John a little. Isaiah Little, here and there. Right. That's how church is supposed to be had. Right. See, we, most of us came out of the, ba I came out of the Baptist church. You know, we had, a, you know, we come up there, somebody, you know, you get a few diggers do the devotion. You know, they say a little prayer, do a little hymn. Then you had the, the, the preacher come in. He said the choir, you know, they get up and then he read two scriptures. No, they sing first. He read two scriptures and then he go about 30 minutes and everybody be like looking at the clock saying it's time to go. That's our service. But service is supposed to be line upon line, precept upon precept. Now, that's we reading that out of the Old Testament. Now, that, I got a scripture that I like to read out of the New Testament to kind of corroborate what we're saying here. Luke, the fourth chapter, and we're going to pick that up at verse 14. Now, we talked about line upon line, precept upon precept, and how he, who, who he's going to give the knowledge to and who he's going to give understanding to. Remember, a lot of people, everybody don't want knowledge, and everybody don't want understanding. That's why this, 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 this group that we're in called a body of believers is so, it's so small. It's so small that everybody don't want this thing, but they're going to want to want it because when they, see, when, they, when, they see that, when they see that black man in the sky, that's when they're going to say the rocks fall on us. <laughs> Don't let him get to me. Rocks, y'all just kill us. Kill me instantly. I want instant death because I know what he going to do. I know what he going to do. Luke, the uh, fourth chapter, pick it up at verse 14. Luke 4 and 14. Read that, my brother. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, 
and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Uh -huh. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Now, if you want to be like Jesus, you do that. We coming up into the church on the Sabbath day and we standing up to read. And what is it, Brother Thomas, that we reading? Go ahead. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. So we, you mean we look in the, in the book of the prophet Isaiah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Ezra, Nehemiah, all these books? It's what it, we look right into the word of God. So he opened up the book of the prophet Isaiah. And what did he see? And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. He found the place where the word of God was written as he stood up on the Sabbath day to read. Go ahead. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, uh -huh. to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20, and he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of them all, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. So he stood up for the read on the Sabbath day. He opened the book of Isaiah, and he read what the scripture said, and then he closed the book, sisters and brothers, and he closed the book perfectly because if he would have read on in the book of Isaiah, it would have said something else that had not yet come to pass. Right, right. And what, what did he actually say when he closed the book after he had read what he read? And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He said, and this day is this scripture that I just read Fulfilled in your ears. I am fulfilling prophecy right now. Right. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Who? Jesus. I'm the one that's delivering this message. Right. I'm the one that's sitting up here uh, um, being anointed to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken hearts, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering the sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Mm -hmm. Now, if he would have kept on reading, it talked about the vengeance part. Mm -hmm. Now, the spirit of the Lord was upon him to do that too. But guess what? He closed the book. Why? Because it wasn't time for that. Right. It wasn't time for that. So now at the time, then he'll do the same thing. He's going to finish that particular prophecy. And people always say, you know, man, I wish I was living in the Bible days. You living in the Bible days exactly. right now. Exactly. Because that's going to happen. The vengeance is going to happen. Amen. And it's whether or not you align yourself with the word of God yes. as opposed to aligning yourself with the world. Right. And that goes right into what I want to talk about today. And that is the title of the class is Be Not Unequally Yoked with Unbelievers. Be Not Unequally Yoked with unbelievers. He didn't say, don't be yoked with them. He said, don't be unequally yoked with them. It's a difference. And I'll talk to you about that. Let's go and read that. That's the first scripture we're going to read. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 6, the 6th chapter. 2 Corinthians 6, because it's real important, sisters and brothers, who you deal with, how you deal with them, and, 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 and whether or not you can deal with them. Whether or not you can deal with them. 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, and we're going to pick that up at verse 14. 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, and verse 14. Okay, go ahead. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Uh-huh. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? What fellowship do you have with dealing with somebody or some organization that is a unbeliever? And when I say dealing with them, I don't mean come in contact with them because it's our job to bring all 
people into the word of Christ and into the, and into the fold of the sheep of the righteous. That's our job. Right. But the thing is, you cannot be unequally yoked with, with, with them and you cannot fellowship as the righteous part of the universe, the righteous part according to God, with the unrighteous part. You can't do it. You can't be unequally yoked. Unequally means this, sisters and brothers, and that is, people always ask me, well, women and men, well, what do you think about me uh, marrying or dating somebody that's not in the word? Now, different people, even in the word of God, give different answers for that. I always say I don't have no problem with it. But you better be grounded in the word of God. You better not be the one to get flipped. You do the flipping. Right. You do the flipping. If I was out there on the dating scene, sisters and brothers, I, the question, would I date somebody who was not in the truth? Yeah, maybe. But guess what? I'm going to be doing my thing. Amen. And you're going to see me right. doing my thing. Right. And if you don't like my thing, you can go on somewhere else and do <laughs> your thing. Do your thing wherever you want to do it. Because if I'm a man and I'm dating somebody out there, you're going to see me reading my Bible. You're going to see me not going somewhere on Friday night. I don't care what's going on. I don't care who's having it. It ain't happening for me on Friday. I ain't going to nobody's club on no Friday night. I ain't going nowhere playing cards on Friday night. I ain't doing that. Because I'm not supposed to do that according to the word of God. So you can, you, you can get with somebody if you want to, but you better be firm in what you're doing. I see too many men and women flipped in the truth. Get with somebody because they so desperately want somebody that they just, well, you know, I, I just can't do that no more. What do you mean you can't do this no more? You know the consequences of leaving this. If you've been out there with a guy, you've been taught the consequences of your actions. Right. You've been taught that. And you know. See, some of us know too much. We know too much to turn back. You know, I always say, if I, if I, if I turn away, I ain't got no, nowhere to go. Because I can't go over there on Sunday. Because I know too much about that. I can't go too much. Nope, no too much about that. Can't do it. So we're not supposed to be unequally yoked. Now we are the ministers of Christ. We are the priests of God. We'll talk about that here in a second. But we cannot unequally be yoked. So you got to be able to stand your ground, sisters and brothers, out there in the world. Like Jesus said, Peter, you be in the world, but not of the world. You are the teacher. You are the priest. You're supposed to be able to stand your ground. And in any circle you find yourselves in, sisters and brothers, you should be the one that people look at as the authority on the word of God. In all of y'all families, this is going to tell whether you're looking at your book, reading your book, know your book, understand your book. All of y'all families, really and truly, by this time, if you've been in the word of God here at the Israel of God for at least a year or two, everybody should be coming to you. Because when, when that subject come up at the, at the dinner table, when that come up at the family reunion, and folks start asking questions, well, you know, God said this. Oh, you, you all is on that. What he said? What he said? <laughs> what y'all said God said? Well, he said this. Well, anybody willing to go to the book? <laughs> You know, you seize that opportunity. You know, when because you don't have to be a person that go up to people. Well, do you know Jesus? Do you know the Holy Ghost? Do you, know, you ain't got to go up to people doing it. Don't, don't do that. Don't run up to people and say, do you know Jesus? Are you saved? Are you born? No. You wait for your opening. You live it, and you wait on your opening. Right. I remember I used to work at a company some years back. And I used to, ooh, that's, when I first came to, I was on fire for it. But I had to calm it down because I didn't want to be one of them, do you know Jesus? Is he, is he, is he first thing? Do you know you got to keep the law? No, that don't work. What you do, you got to set, you got to do the setup. And see, what I used to, that's going to break room. 
Bible color coded. Sit it wide open. I got it in Isaiah 66. I ain't even reading it. I'm just waiting on somebody to come by. I'm just waiting on them to say, you know, one of those people that they talking it. They like to come up in your face. And say, What's going on? What you doing? You know, so I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there. This energetic sister comes up. Hey, what you what? Ooh, you got your Bible open. What you reading? I'm in Isaiah 66 where it talks about, you know, those who are uh, eating swine's flesh and stuff like that shall be burned in the fire. Let me just read the whole verse to you. Let me. <laughs> You know, and she got the, okay, I never heard of that. But see, I'm pushing myself out there, but I'm not being overt with it. See? Right, right. I'm letting you come on into, walk on into the trap. And when you get in there, ah, I got you. Mm -hmm. At least you will have heard about it. Yeah. You would have heard about it. So you got to push it on. But the Lord said, you know, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to do all kinds of crazy stuff. You just present it to people. That's why some of y'all, you, you know, you get, you get in with your families and you so a lot of people get disappointed because, you know, my family, they ain't listening to me. They, all you do is just put it out there. They, they know that you are the authority. Mm -hmm. You're the one that, needs, that, 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 that they can come to. Why? Because you take them to the book. Yeah. You take them to, you're not just guessing and throwing stuff up there that sound good and, you know, break off into a holy dance or something like that. No, we got to do all that. All we got to do is read that which is written. Verse 15. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believe it with an infidel? You don't have anything to be yoked up like that. You don't. Go ahead. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? What, what, and you are the temple of God if the word of God is in you. You represent him. Go ahead. For ye are the temple of the living God. Uh -huh. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Read verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. He said, come out from among them, and be ye separate. He's not saying isolate yourself, sisters and brothers, but from a spiritual perspective, from a mental capacity, then you separate yourself. Jesus himself went into the, went into the tavern, sisters and brothers. Why do you think he had a reputation as a wine bibber? He had a reputation as a wine bibber because he drunk wine and he went in and he was among the people who needed the help. He wasn't among the people that were well. He was among the people that were sick and made them comfortable. Sit down. Let's go and get us a little taste. Made them comfortable. And then he probably put that word of God on him. Right. But you don't see him yoking up with him, having a business with him, having all kinds of stuff with him. Had, now you're depending on him for, for your livelihood and you're getting right. all intertwined in him. You're falling in love with somebody that don't even know Jesus, don't even like Jesus, don't even promote Jesus. You can't be doing all that. That's the unequally part. That's the unequally yoked part that he's talking about right there. Go ahead, my brother. Finish that. He said, wherefore, come out from among them. Go ahead. And be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive he you. He said, if you touch not the unclean thing, then I will receive you. Again, everything is predicated upon your biblical prowess in terms of knowing what to do in the word of God. And you got to stay away from your weaknesses, sisters and brothers. Understand yourself and the things that you know you can do and you can't do to be able to stay in alignment with the Lord. Now, let's go, if we will, my brother, Amos, the third chapter. Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. And let's pick it up at verse 1. Amos 3 and 1. Okay, let's read it. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. He said, You only have I known out of all the families of the earth. Israel is the only one that the Lord gave his word to, to present his word. So it's almost like you have, some of y'all got kids out here. Let's say you got three, three kids. Let's just say that. 
you got the firstborn. Three years later, you had the secondborn. Three years later, you had the, you had the last one. Well, that first one, he better know better than them younger ones. Right. You was here first. I didn't taught you the most. Right. You know my rules. You know my laws. And more so, you know how I get down with that belt. You know how I get down with that discipline. Now, I expect them to be a little off kilter until they get that belt enough to learn. Right. But you, I ain't taking all that mess off you because you know. And that's what the Lord is saying. He's saying, look, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all of your iniquities. And that's how it is until this day. We get punished for stuff. We get thrown, thrown in the bus, under the bus for stuff. And he's like, well, everybody else do it. You ain't everybody else. Right. You're not everybody else. You're the Lord's chosen. And then what did he say? Can two walk together except they be agreed? He said, can two walk together except they be agreed? And I say that to everybody in here. Can you walk, can you walk together with somebody who you are not principally agreed with? I mean, we have some rocky situations. You got rocky relationships. You got rocky marriage. You got rocky stuff. And when you don't agree with stuff, stuff is rocky. Amen. When you can't principally walk in the same direction, it gets rocky, sisters and brothers. You should never do things like even own a business with somebody that, that, you, that, you, that you're trying to, trying to promote yourself you can't, you can't do that, sister, brother, because you're going to find yourself compromising. Well, I think we ought to be open on the Sabbath. Well, I don't. Well, I do. Now you, you see how you're right. unequally yoked right, right there. You're unequally yoked. And sometimes, you know, we find ourselves, you know, uh, coming around too late, sister, brother, especially when you have, you know, you have marriages that come into the truth. They come into the truth. You know, I've seen several situations where you might, you got the man, he come in. And the woman don't come in. And that's a fight for a minute. Or sometimes you have a woman come in, the man don't want to have nothing to do with it. You know, and that, 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 that's a conflict. They're not necessarily walking together. And sometimes those situations end up in, uh, end up in divorce and end up in things that, you know, were not supposed to be. You know, but if you're in the word of God now, you ain't married. You don't go, you don't, you got to be, you got to have a strong foundation. Otherwise, you're looking for trouble. Even if you go on a business, you're talking about going in with somebody where you know he got, he got some cash, I got some cash, we put our cash together, we can do this. You better sit down and work that thing out. You better work that, work out the rules and regulations of that relationship. Before you start jumping in with somebody and then all, uh, all chaos break loose. Because you cannot be unequally yoked together with things and people, sisters and brothers, that ain't about God's business. You can't do that. So he said, can two walk together except they be agreed? The answer is no, nah, they can't. They cannot. Now let's go back, if we will, to the New Testament. Let's go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Because the principle of who we are, sisters and brothers, you know, is based on, is based partly on this scripture right here. Because the thing is, we got all these denominations all over the world, all over the place. I heard it's 2,000. I ain't ever counted 2,000, but they said 2,000 religions. Somebody, a lot of folks wrong. A whole lot of folks. A lot of folks wrong. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And my brother, let's pick it up. If we will, at verse 4, we're going to read 4 through 6. Okay, let's go. Let's read it. One God and, and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. You're going to start, start at verse 4. Verse 4. Okay. Verse 4. Yep. There is one body uh -huh. and one spirit, uh -huh. even as ye are called in one hope of So there is, there is one body and one spirit. The one spirit is this one word, sisters and brothers. There's one word, and he said, as, even as you are called in hope of your calling, read. One Lord. One Lord. Read. One faith. One faith. One baptism. And one baptism. Go ahead. One God uh -huh. and Father of all, uh -huh. who is above all and through all and in you all. He said, it's one God, one Father, 
who is above all and through in you all and through you all and in you all. That's if you accept them, sisters and brothers. There are no hundred religions. We go here, we go Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, and we go Muslim, we go this, we go that. And a whole the sad part is a whole bunch of folks that's 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 not right according to the word of God. According to the word of God. You know, they got people out there, sisters and brothers, they even got people out there. I don't know, there's this guy out there. They, they um, I think his name is what? Any of y'all ever heard of that guy, was Ray Higgins or something like that? The guy that just denied Jesus left and right, said yeah. Jesus is a made up story. Yeah. But the one the thing about these conscious people, man, they're, they're supposed to be the conscious people, right? Then when they're really unconscious. And the thing about it is that what these unconscious people don't even think about the fact they never look at prophecy, never talk about prophecy, never talk about the Bible being written and then history coming back after the Bible was written and it corroborates what happened. Right. They don't ever talk about it. I ain't never heard one talk about that. Never heard them talk about that. So really, as conscious as they think they are, they are unconscious. They are unconscious. Not understanding that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And if everybody was in lockstep, the world would be in harmonious step. But let's get on us as Israel, sisters and brothers. Let's get on us. Let's go, if we will, to Exodus, the 19th chapter. Because the thing about it is that we got a job that we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to be like everybody else. We're not supposed to be like everybody else. We're going to show you real quick here what the Lord, the charge that the Lord gave us. Exodus. Exodus 19. Exodus 19. And we're going to pick that up at verse 3. Exodus 19 and verse 3. All right, my brother, go ahead. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, how I, how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. He said, you have seen what I did to Pharaoh and his army. How I bear you on eagles' wings and I brought you out of that and brought you unto me. Go ahead and read. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed uh -huh. and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. He's telling you if, you, if you do this, you're going to be my people. If you walk lockstep with me, then you're going to be my people. Go ahead. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. A kingdom of priests. Go ahead. And the holy nation. Uh-huh. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So he said you're going to be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. So that means that the whole nation as a whole is a kingdom of priests. What does a priest do? Now, let me give you a little window of what a priest, what a, what a priest does. All of y'all have seen these movies, these television shows, where you see, you know, you got the Gentile, you know, he in the he goes to the confession box with the other Gentile that's supposed to be father. Father, I have sinned. <laughs> what have you done, my son? Oh, I murdered that person and murdered that person and stole from that person. Can you forgive me? Wash your hands, son, and be clean. While he getting a little payoff from the, from the <laughs> mafia, putting a big old uh, uh, offer in the collection plate, right. you know. But, but the thing is, is that the people go to that priest. And the priest will sometimes give them uh, uh, knowledge or information on a certain thing that they may ask about or something like that. Well, the whole nation of Israel, sisters and brothers, we are the priest to the world. We're not just Israel to say, you know what? God chose us. We Israel. Ha, ha, ha. Right. No, man, you got a job. Mm -hmm. We could go in Romans, I think it's the ninth chapter, where he said the oracles of God were given unto Israel. Right. So that we would disseminate the word of God to the rest of the, of the sons of Adam. That's our job, to disseminate that word and to give them what they need to get salvation and get on the right side of God. Give everybody a shot. So he said a nation of kings and of priests that we were supposed to be a peculiar people. Now let's read a little bit more on that. Let's go to um, Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 14. Deuteronomy. 
Deuteronomy 14. And we're going to start that off. We're going to do a little skipping. We're going to do one through three first. One through three. Okay, go ahead. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. You shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. So he's separating Israel because obviously there were some people that would do those things for the dead. We're not getting off into doing things for the dead. Go ahead. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. He said the Lord has chosen you to be a peculiar people unto himself. Read. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. Above all the nations upon the earth. In other words, I'm setting you up to be my ambassador. You're supposed to do the things that I promote. Do the laws that I have you to do so that you can actually present them to the entire, uh, uh, entire mankind. Right. Read. Thou shalt not eat any abom abominable thing. So the first thing he told them right here is that thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. That's the first thing. Now skip on, if you will, my brother, to uh, verse 8. We're going to continue on that same vein right there. Go ahead and read. And the swine, because it divided the hook, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. It is unclean unto you. I'm, having, I'm saying this to you because you are to, to present that to the entire world. Go ahead. You shall not eat of the, their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. Uh-huh. These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters, all that have fins and scales ye shall eat. And whatsoever hath not fins and scales ye may not eat. It is unclean unto you. It is unclean unto you. So he gives us the, 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 the basics of even nutrition system, brothers. And it, this is so that we would separate ourselves from the nations of the world. And in turn, we would teach them what they needed to do to be on the right side of God. Now, let's go a little further with it. Let's go, if we will, to Deuteronomy. Go back to Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. Deuteronomy chapter seven. And I want you to pick it up at verse one. Deuteronomy seven and verse one. Go ahead, my brother. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. He said, I'm going to go into the land and I'm going to cast them out because these people are greater than you. You can't do it by yourself. I'm going to create the condition where I cast them out. And even though they are mightier than you, go ahead and read. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them. And utterly, utterly destroy them, thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. He said, Thou shalt make no covenant, nor show mercy unto them. What are you talking about? A covenant? He's talking about an agreement with them. Right. You're not going to make any agreement with them because I ain't, I, I'm not signing off on nothing that they're doing. You're going to do what I'm doing, and you're not going to show any mercy. You're not going to let up on that. Right. You're not going to say, well, We'll give y'all a little this. No, you ain't giving them a little nothing. Mm. You're going to do what I sanction you to do. Go ahead and read. What verse? Uh, verse 3. Okay. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Oh, he said, neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Obviously, he didn't think that the nation was strong enough to just intermingle like that. Right. And they not change or flip you. That's what I was talking about earlier. You can't get with nobody that ain't into the word of God if you ain't strong enough. To flip them right. and to know that you can flip them. It's not doing something that is that, 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 that uh, you're not trying to trick anybody. You're just basically acting the way God wants you to act and you hoping that it rub off on them. That's right. it. Right. No tricks, no, 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 no uh, uh, deception going on right there. You present your package, you present your portfolio. This is how it is. Do you want it? If you don't, I'm out. Right. <laughs> I'm out. Go ahead and read. What verse? Uh, verse 3, middle of 3. Go ahead. Thy daughter shalt thou not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Uh-huh. For they will turn away thy son from following me. He said, they will turn away thy son from following me. And I've seen it, sisters brothers of my own, I've seen the people in the Israel of God that promoted and preached the word. When I say preached, I don't mean they stood for the Rosham, but you know, we're a nation of kings and priests right, anyway. Right. 
You know, so every time you get up there and you witness to somebody, you say something to somebody that is the truth of the word of God, then you, you kind of preaching. You know, you saying the word of God. He said, but, if you, but I've seen those same people get entangled with somebody and fall away. Never would have thought this, that person would have fell away. Never would have thought that. But he said, you're going to turn them away from following me? Go ahead. That they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. And it will destroy thee, he said, suddenly. Suddenly. Now let's go, if we will, to um, Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 12. And let's pick that up, if we will, at verse 29. We're going to read 29 through the rest of the chapter, which is 29 through 32. Okay, okay let's go. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land. All right, listen, listen, listen to verse 30 now. Read. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. By following them. See, the thing is, sisters and brothers, that's the big problem that we have in our society today. Amen. We want to follow everything that's popular. Right. Me, and the, me and the fellas were talking on the way down here that in the 1800s, that y'all know that Christmas was banned in the United States. Right. Yeah. It was banned. A lot of people don't know that. It wasn't a good thing. And now when everybody else started doing it, we, we feel a little Christmassy. <laughs> you know, we feel a little, I mean, look here, man. <laughs> I, I was reading this thing one time where y'all, a lot of y'all have heard of the, uh, the, the, the Gentile preacher, uh, Garner Ted Armstrong. They know a lot of stuff. They really do. Garner, Armstrong, Garner, uh, Garner Ted, he wrote an um, uh, uh, essay. And it was, it, was, it was about Christmas. He said, we were born, all, most of us were born in a ready-made world. In other words, you were celebrating, some of us were uh, celebrating Christmas before we knew who, who we were. Mm. You know, I, I, I've seen with one-year-old babies on Christmas got a, a, a room full of toys that in three, four years, they're going to forget, they, they won't even be able to remember that that happened. But it's a ready-made world. Before I knew it, I was saying to my mama, what? Is Santa Claus coming? When he coming? Where did I get that from? Where did I learn that from? It was already embedded into me from when I was a baby. Right. A ready, a ready-made world. So he said, don't, don't, don't take, take heed to thyself and don't follow them. Go ahead. After that, they be, des be destroyed from before thee, uh -huh. and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Even so will I do likewise, serving their gods. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. You shall not do that to the Lord your God. Go ahead. For every abomination to the Lord, which he, ha which he hated, have they done unto their gods? Have they done unto their gods? Go ahead. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. They have burnt their sons and daughters, sisters and brothers, in the fire to their god, which is no god. People used to do that, thinking they were serving God. Just burn their kid up in the fire. I guess, you know, you, you, you kid number three. Number three always go to the fire. I'm sorry kind of foolishness is that? Are you following after these type of people? Go ahead and finish up, my brother. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. He said, whatsoever thing I command you, observe to do it, and thou shalt not add to it, nor diminish from it. Amen. You do what I have you to do. That's what you do. And see, people think, you know, well, that's kind of tight, ain't it? No, it ain't tight. You just do what, you know, when we was coming up, you did, you did what your mama told you. You got it. Right. Wasn't no, wasn't no strange thing about that. You, you knew what you couldn't do. And when you did and then you got caught, it wasn't no, well, I got caught. I think she'll forgive me. No, 
Most of us, no, I wasn't, I wasn't give. there was no forgiveness in my house. <laughs> did, did I tell you not to do that? <laughs> yes. Did you do it? Yes. Do you now know the consequences? <laughs> they were, hey, when she said that, I was like, didn't answer the question. <laughs> do you know the consequences? <laughs> Oh, you ain't going to talk, huh? You're going to get it twice as bad. You ain't going to talk back to me. But we, he said, don't diminish from it. Don't add nothing to it. Now, let's read, if we will. Let's go um, to Numbers, the 15th chapter. Because the thing about it, sisters and brothers, the reason that he had to make us peculiar is so that we would go by his word. And when you start letting people deviate, 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 then you're going to have other people that look at that and figure, okay, he, he must be a weak, he a weakling there. He a weakling. And when the Lord was trying to establish Israel, when he was trying to make them a, a, a people unto himself, he didn't take no slack. He didn't give, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't give anything. What we say, Numbers, Numbers, numbers 15. 15, right? Yeah. Numbers 15. And I want you to pick it up, my brother, at verse 32. Numbers 15 and verse 32. Okay, read it. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Now, they found a man that gathered sticks on the Sabbath day. Now, if you ask me a question, you know, if I went outside right now and then I saw some tree limbs on the ground and I picked one up, I picked two up, Two is plural, so that's sticks, right? Do I think that, I, that I'll go to the lake of fire? No, I don't. No, I don't. But obviously, this man was gathering sticks for a reason, sisters and brothers. Right. He was gathering sticks for a reason. And the reason he was likely gathering sticks was so he can go and build a fire and probably cook something. Right. Just picking up a stick, that's, God don't care about you picking up a stick and Throwing it or picking up another stick and throwing it somewhere. You know, that's just things that a human, a human mind might tell you to do. You're just walking out, chilling. But this guy was picking up sticks for a reason on the Sabbath day. And what happened? Verse 33. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. Uh huh. And they put him in a ward because it was not declared what should be done, done to him. So they put him in the hole and said, go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall surely be put to death. Whoa! He said the man shall be put to death. Put to death? Go ahead. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died as the Lord commanded Moses. As the Lord commanded Moses, because he was trying to shape and build a nation, sisters and brothers, and he wanted everybody to see, I don't play around. Right. I don't play around. You got to do what I say because I got a purpose in what I'm doing. I'm trying to build you up as a what? Peculiar nation unto me. Right. A peculiar nation unto me. Now, my brother, let's go, if we will, to uh, 1 Kings, the 11th chapter. 1 Kings, the 11th chapter. And the thing about it, sisters and brothers, we're going to deal with, 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 with Solomon here. And Solomon, we all, we, we all know that Solomon was, a, was one of the wisest men ever to live. His, 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 the kingdom that he, that he built, the respect that he garnered, the wisdom that flourished out of this man that was world-renowned. Even this guy turned. He turned. And let's see what happened to him. And see, this, these are the things that happen when you do things that the Lord don't want you to do. Go ahead and read verse 1. 
But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. See, it don't matter. Look, I'm going to tell you, it don't matter how, how, who you are or what your position is. If you ain't strong enough to deal with other nations or other people, they can get, you can get got. Right. You can. I don't put it past nobody. Myself, I don't go into arenas where I know I might be weak. Right. I'm not going to do I'm not going to entertain that. I got some friends, sisters, and brothers that when I came into the truth, those friends left me because there were some things that, w- that they did that I wasn't going to do. I wasn't going to go to those type of clubs again. Number one, the Lord wouldn't have me to do that. Number two, I look at that that would have been my weakness. I'm not entertaining that. I don't care if I'm, uh, I can be Israel of God. I've been been in this word 25 plus years. And in certain places, I will not go because it's not good for me to go there. Certain people, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want you to write me, email me, text me because you are trouble for me. You are trouble for me. And if I, I don't even know your number no more. If I knew it, I would block it. Because if you and me get together, it ain't going to be pretty for me. It ain't going to be pretty for me. So I don't let you come in my space. Right. I got to be separate from you. Because you my weakness. You my weakness. Now go ahead and read what he did. Go ahead. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. Neither shall they come in to you. Don't go in to them, don't come in to you. You man of God, you wise man of God, you. Go ahead. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Uh-huh. Solomon clave unto these in love. Solomon clave unto these in love. You see what that word love will do to you? Don't think you are all in the clear, man. Don't expose yourself to your weakness. Stay away from that thing. Whether you be male or female, stay away from that because if it can get Solomon, it can get all of us. Go ahead and read. And he had 700 wives, Mm. princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. And his wives turned away his heart from God because he was unequally Yoked, unequally yoked. Go ahead and read. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as his heart, as was the heart of David his father. Uh huh. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the mm. goddess of the Zidonians. Go ahead. And after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. It says Solomon went after these gods. It ain't like they, you know, they, they just, you know. He just sat there and the wives were just telling him and he was like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. No, he was like, tell me more. Right. Well, what can, how can I get into that? He went after these gods, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Just like, just like a lot of us, you know, we go after the things of this nation. Right. We go after the good times. We go after the things that are anti-Christ. Right. anti-Christ. Go ahead and read. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as David did, as David, as did David his father. He did not go fully after the Lord as David did his father. Now the thing about it, all of us know some stories about David. Amen. David did some stuff, man, that, that will rival all of these hip-hop of Atlanta shows. <laughs> Married to medicine and all that. You think you saw some <laughs> crazy stuff in that? Oh, David did some stuff. David did some stuff, but uh, obviously his, his heart wasn't turned into what Solomon's heart was. Go ahead and read. Then did Solomon build in high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab. So he built something to this God. That's why I say he went after these gods. He built something to these gods. Go ahead and read. In the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Mm. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Uh Uh-huh. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. The Lord was angry with Solomon. Go ahead. Because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel. Because his heart, sisters and brothers, his heart 
was turned. And when your heart gets turned, everything going to turn. Everything is going to turn because you don't have the fortitude to put up the spiritual warfare battle that it takes to thrive in this world. Because every, every single day, sisters and brothers, we are fighting a spiritual war. Right. But see, some of us, we don't, we don't fight too hard. Mm-hmm. We don't fight too hard. But there's something on, in each and every one of us, sisters and brothers, that wants us to do wrong and wants us to do evil. It's always present. Yep. But have you, built, have you built yourself up and grounded yourself in the word of God to where you can withstand and you can fight? But see, it's possible to fight, to fight because uh, he said, resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Right. And the perfect example of that was when Jesus when he confronted Jesus in Luke, the fourth chapter. Satan came at Jesus so hard, man. I mean, he came at him hard. And he resisted him. Matter of fact, let's, 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 we're going we're gonna to deviate a little bit. Let's go, let's go there. I want to read that today. Let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke, the fourth chapter. And we'll get back to these strange wives here in a moment. Luke, the fourth chapter, and let's pick that up, my brother, at verse verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, Uh being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Afterwards he was hungry, so he was there in the spirit with the devil and he was at his weakest point, hunger. Go ahead and read. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the son of God, command these, command this stone that it be made bread. So he gonna say, if, look, I, I got you where I want you. You're hungry. Make these stones turn them into bread. Mm-hmm. And then what did Jesus come back with? And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So the spiritual warfare system, brothers, that was going on, how did he fight it? With the word of God. Even though the urge was there. And see, that's one thing about about, uh, situations that you find yourself in. And I want you to kind of discover this. The next time you find yourself in a situation and you're urged to do something, that the urge is real, but you can overcome it. It's the urge. The urge is a feeling. Right. It's a feeling that you want to do something. Right. You want to knock that person out. <laughs> you want to do it. But you gotta, you, you, gotta, you gotta recall that word, that scripture, thou should not kill. <laughs> right. Every time that urge comes, you gotta fight it with the word of God. And this is what Jesus was doing. Go ahead and read. And the devil take him, him up into a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment time. Moment uh-huh. of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give to thee and the glory of them. For that, is, for that it is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. All shall be mine. And he showed Jesus all this stuff. So he's vulnerable. He's hungry. He just, he just wants something. Now he shows him, not only uh, he tempts him by, by saying, turn this into bread, which Jesus could have done. But then he said, look, you can have everything. It's mine. It was mine to give. I can give it unto you. All you got to do is worship me and all will be yours. And we find ourselves in that situation, sisters and brothers. There are shortcuts that we can take in life. We could, all of us that ran across situations where we could have done something that, that was just a little bit illegal. Mm-hmm. We could have hit a home run with that boy. We could have hit a home run with that boy and nobody would have known. Nobody would have known. We could have got away with it. But obviously y'all didn't do it because y'all were sitting here with me. All right. Instead of being on a beach in the, in the Caribbean somewhere <laughs> with all your earnings from you doing your wickedness. But you here. So you overcame. The urge was there. But you overcame it. Go ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, 
and him only shalt thou serve. And him only shalt thou serve. Go ahead and read. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence. Uh -huh. For it is written. Oh, so, so, so Satan gonna come now and say, for it is written. I know right. scripture too, buddy. And that's what all of us need to understand. Satan knows scripture. Because he's going to say, for it is written what? He shall give his angels charge over thee to uh -huh. keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered, answer, and Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all temptation, he departed from him for a season. He said, and, and when the devil had ended all of those temptations, he departed from him. So you can make him depart with the last few words for, for a season. Because he's coming back. Amen. Whatever victory you thought you won, oh, the war ain't over yet. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you do, you, 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 it's me standing up here. It could be Tony P standing up here. It could be Brother Bowie standing up here. All of us get tempted to do something crazy. And it's spiritual warfare that we have to fight all the time, knowing that we can win one. We ain't won the war yet. You ain't won the war until you lay down the rest, if you won. Right. Until you lay down the rest. So we, if we make the comparison, sisters and brothers, to Solomon and Jesus, it's a whole different outlook. It's a whole different outlook. You might say, well, that's Jesus. That's God right there. Let's go look at somebody who was in the same position as Solomon. And when I say same position, he was flesh. Right. Let's go, if we will, real quick. And I love to use this example. Let's go to uh, Job, the first chapter. Job, the first chapter. Job, the first chapter, and let's pick it up real quick at verse 6. Job 1 and 6. Okay, read. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down it. He said, I've been going to and fro in the earth. And walking up and down in it. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my, my servant Job? As you've been walking to and fro and up and down, have you considered my servant Job? Read. That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man. Okay, hold, hold, hold on for a second. Now I want y'all to, 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 to italicize this. I want you to highlight it, whatever you got to do. Start over and say what Job was. There was none like him in the earth. What was it? Four things. You're going to read this one slow. Go ahead. A perfect. He was perfect. Read. And an upright man. And an upright man. Go ahead. One that feared God. He feared God. That's three. And escheweth evil. And he escheweth evil. That's four. These are the four attributes, sisters and brothers, of Job. Obviously, they are the four attributes of somebody who is extremely pleasing to God. Amen. Unlike Solomon was, even though he was great, but he got, he got off into his weakness. Right. But these, sisters and brothers, are the keys to your not only getting into the kingdom, but your existence right here on the earth. Right. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about as we keep reading. So number one point, perfection. Number two point, upright. And perfection, sisters and brothers, is having a mindset toward God of perfection. In other words, you don't sit back and say, well, you know, ain't nobody perfect. I can't, can't win them all. You got to have the win them all mindset. Mm -hmm. You got to have the win them all mindset because that maximizes effort. Right. It maximizes effort when you have a perfect mindset. It's not that you're going to be perfect, but you got to think you can be. Right. You got to think you can because it maximizes effort. An upright man, a man that wants to do the right, it's just in you to want to do the right thing. It's just there. 
You want to do the right thing in everything with everybody in every situation. You want to do the right thing. And one that fears God, that means you fear him enough that you want to keep his commandments to the T. Not saying you don't ever fall, but the book said that a righteous man, not an evil man, but a righteous man falls seven times and he get back up. Right. But a wicked man fall and he wallow in his wickedness. Mm-hmm. He get comfortable falling and being in his wickedness. It ain't no big deal to him. See, David wasn't like that. When David messed up and David was wicked, it said he poured sackcloth and ashes on himself. He was brokenhearted, sisters and brothers, that he had, that he had disappointed God. He was brokenhearted, so he got perfect, upright, feared God. And the truth of evil is that when you see it, you hate it. You don't promote it. When you see evil done to somebody or you see an evil situation, you don't like it. You, 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 you go against it. It is, it, it is disgusting to you. And you don't promote it. So those are the, those four things. I want you to keep those things in mind. Verse 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, doth, doth Job fear God for naught? He said, does Job fear God for nothing? Go ahead. Has not thou made an hedge about him? He said, has not thou made a hedge about him? Read. And about his house? And about his house? And, huh? about, and about all that he had on every side? And about all that he has on every side? It's all the things that the Lord doing for Job, right? Go ahead. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. You blessed the work of his hands, read. And his substance is increased in the land. Yeah, and his substance, the things that he has, the things that he owns, the, 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 the things that he has, the affluence of things that he has. He said, thou hast increased his substance in the land. Verse 11. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had. And he will curse thee to thy face. Now, the thing about it, sisters and brothers, what I want you to get out of this, as we contrast Solomon and Job, Satan has admitted, I can't touch him. All right. Because of the four things that we pointed out. He admitted, I can't bust through that hedge. I can't bust through it. I can't bust through it. And as I thought about it, sisters and brothers, I said, if he gave it to Job, why can't he give it to me? Right. But Job earned his head. Job built his hedge. The Lord just said, okay, you're going to be like that? Let me, I'll give you a layer. Oh, you're going you, you gonna to be perfect? I'm going to give you a layer. You're going to eschew evil? Let me give you another, another layer. You're going to do all these four things? Let me give you a thick layer so Satan can't touch you. And why can't I have it when we know that, that God is not a respected person? Ain't nobody right, trying right. to be rich or anything like that, but I'm just looking at what Job got, right. and I'm looking at what he did to get it. Mm-hmm. What he did to get it. And the thing is, Job's personality and his walk with the Lord was so outstanding that the Lord hedged a bet on him. He hedged a bet on him. What did he tell him? Read verse uh, 12. 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not, thy, put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So he said, I'm going to bet on my servant. He said, you can take all you got, but you can't kill him. You can take everything he got. And if we read further, we're going to do some skipping because we can't stay on, in Job all day. He went through some stuff, sister and brother. Job went through some stuff. Matter of fact, we're not going to read. We, we're going to skip all the way down. Now, the stuff he went through, he, I mean, he had some, some situations with his children. I mean, he had all kinds of stuff that happened to him. He took away just about everything he had. Skip down to verse 20. After he had taken some stuff away. Go ahead. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground 
and worship. So Job, Job, Job was some kind of way. And ain't that you ain't going, you know, when the, when the Lord does some stuff to you, that you ain't going to go through some stuff. You're not going to sometimes second guess yourself. you be like, I'm going through this. I'm going through that. I thought I was a servant of God. I thought I was this. I thought I was that. And then you start questioning, is God real? I mean, does he, am I still his servant? I mean, why is it things, why things aren't breaking for me? Well, maybe he, he boasting to, to, to Satan on you. So that your downfall temporarily can inspire other people, sisters and brothers. Mm-hmm. So it can inspire other people. But what did Job say after all this stuff happened? What did he say in verse 21? And said, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken he away. He said, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. I came in the world naked, and I'm going to leave naked. Read. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, in all of the things that Job went down for, all the things that Job lost, lost his children, lost his livestock, lost his servants, lost this, lost that. Verse 22. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Now, nor did he say, God, you ain't no God because you did this and that. And all of y'all know that we'd have heard people who really don't know God say, what kind of God would let this happen? What kind of God would let something run into, run into the world trade and all those people die? Right. What kind of God would let this be a mass shooting over there? What kind of God y'all say y'all serve it? Right. Well, you don't know him like we know him. But Job knew him. Job knew him, sisters and brothers. Now, let's skip on down if we will. And, and, and he started going through some other stuff. Now, let's go um, uh, skip down to verse 7, chapter 2, verse 7. Okay, read it. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a pot's herd to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thine integrity? He said, "Uh, do Do you retain your integrity? I mean, basically saying, You ain't no man. You up there trying to serve something and you see what he's doing to you. He ain't where he at now. Where is God that you, you, you be calling on and doing this and doing that? Where he at? Read. Curse God and die. He told curse God and die. That's the person closest to him, his wife. Curse God and die. Read. But he said unto her. But he said unto her. Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. You sound like a fool. <laughs> Go ahead and read. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? Wow, th- this guy was something else. That's why I call Job one of the greatest men in the Bible. And that includes Moses and David and all of them. One of the greatest men in the Bible. Go ahead and read. In all this did not Job sin with his lips. In all this he didn't sin with his lips. So when we make the contrast, sisters and brothers, this guy had all of this wealth and everything, and it was taken away from him, and it didn't really, it fazed him in, in terms of him having to put up what, he, what happened to him. But as far as his walk with the Lord, in, in, in terms of him uh, um, uh, walking with him and choosing to still be a servant of God, didn't change nothing. The money didn't change nothing. The houses and the, and the substance being taken away didn't change a thing. He still served God. And that's the choice that we have to make. We have to make that choice. And we can't intertwine ourselves with people, sisters and brothers, who ain't doing the same. I mean, intertwine. We are the priests now. We are the priests. So we out there to save the sin sick souls with the word of God. But don't get it twisted. Don't get yourself caught up with these folks. Don't get it caught up like Solomon did. Let's go, if we will, to, uh, let's go to Ezra, the 10th chapter. Ezra, the 10th chapter. We're going to pick up on these wives again. Ezra. 10th chapter. Let's 
start at verse 1. Now when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. Uh -huh. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, and have taken strange wives of the people of the, of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. He said that there, now they, they had taken, taken these strange wives, and now he said, now there is hope concerning this thing, but go ahead. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives such as are born of them, according uh -huh. to the counsel of my Lord, and those that tremble at the commandment of our God and let it be done according to the law. Now, he knew, they knew that they weren't supposed to, to have these strange wives, sisters and brothers, but as we could, we could probably see in a lot of instances in the word of God, Israel would often fall back, and they would even go to, they had even gotten to the point, sisters and brothers, where sometimes they didn't even hold the feast. They didn't even have the feast sometimes. And we, we, we think that, you know, we're in a land where, you know, the majority of people, they don't know about Israel and they don't know about having the feasts and the laws of God, where it was, where it was like that when they were a nation, sisters and brothers. It, it got like that sometimes. But keep on reading. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We will also be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. Then arose Ezra and made the chief priests, the Levites in all Israel to swear that they should do according to this word. Uh-huh, go ahead. And they swear. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God and went into the chamber of Johanan, the son of Elisha. And when he came thither, he did, he did eat no bread nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. He, he, he mourned because the transgression of them had been carried away and had done this strange thing. Now let's go, let's skip, if we will, to verse 10 and read. And Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers and do his pleasure and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. Then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, as thou hast said, so, we, so must we do. So they had to clean up, sisters and brothers, all the mess that they had made because these strange wives were turning them from the Lord himself. And when, you, when, when, when this kind of stuff happens, sisters and brothers, then the nation itself is not in lockstep with God and he's going to put something on you. He's going to put some on you. Let's go, if we will, to uh, Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Because what we, what, what, we, what we are contending, sisters and brothers, is that we know that when Israel starts sinning, we're going to pay more for our stuff than anybody else pays for theirs. Right. It's just going it's, it's to happen. We're going to look at that for a minute. Isaiah, the fifth chapter, and let's pick that up, my brother, at verse, uh, verse 11. Isaiah, the fifth chapter, verse 11. Okay, read it when you get to it. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them. Go ahead. And the harp, and the vow, and the tabret, and pipe, and wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hand. So in other words, we like to drink all night, we like to party all night, and we don't even consider the Lord. We don't even consider him. Go ahead and read. And, 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 and in not considering him, what happens? Go ahead and read. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Therefore, my people have gone into captivity. We wonder why some things have happened to us over the years. People, it's, it's astonishing to me that people are ignorant as to our condition and the reasons of our condition, conviction, uh, condition. They don't even think about it. Read. 
because they have no knowledge. Uh huh. And their honorable men are famished. The honorable men are famished. So your big time preachers and the people who are supposed to be the leaders of your society, they're famished because they don't know nothing. They don't know how to get you out of this. Go ahead and read. And their multitude dried up with thirst. Uh huh. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And when he said that hell has enlarged itself, sisters and brothers, we're talking about hell as in your condition has enlarged itself. It is no secret that we are at the bottom of things. It is no secret that we are the last hired and first fired. It is no secret that our sisters and brothers are getting killed by the police and more, so much more indicting, we're getting killed by our own people and we don't see Al Sharpton marching for that. Right. Do we? We don't see the civil rights leaders marching. We kill our people more than the police kill our people. Yeah. But that don't make the news. It don't make the news. What, what makes the news is the trickling of the unjust killing of our folks that makes the news. We're not in, up, we're not up in arms about the black on black crime because that's the hell that the Lord has enlarged. And the foot that's on our neck is basically the bat that the Lord is swinging, but the Gentile is swinging it for him. Right. But the Lord gave him the bat. He gave him the bat. The rod of anger. You just, he just, okay, you beat him up this time. <laughs> okay, next time you beat him up, but beat him good. Mm -hmm. You beat him up. Because hell has enlarged itself because of our iniquity. We've joined in with the nations to do everything that they want to do. What verse are you, my brother? Middle of 14. Middle of 14. Okay, finish 14. And their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Shall descend into it. Now let's go if we will, because the Lord always, the Lord always gave us, sisters and brothers, uh, a way out, a way to please him. He always gave us a way to please him, but we just didn't want to take it. The Lord had us set up to be groomed as a nation that was, that was likened to the way that he wanted us. Gave us so many chances and so many opportunities to be our own unique, peculiar nation, but we let it fall to the ground. Let's go into Ezekiel, the 16th chapter. Ezekiel chapter 16. And you're going to start that at verse 1. Verse 1. Okay, go ahead, my brother. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know, their, know her abominations, mm -hmm. and say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth at thy na nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite. And thy mother and Hittite. So in other words, you were in a land that you were a stranger in. You were like a child. And the people of the land, he likened them to the grown-ups, the Hittites and the Amorites. Go ahead and read. As for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not cut, neither was thou washed in the water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. In other words, you was in a land as a child, because you didn't know the land, and then nobody had no pity on you. Nobody had pity on you as a nation. Go ahead and read. None I pitied thee uh -huh. to do any of these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. Uh -huh. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, Live, yea, and I said unto thee when thou was in thy blood, live. So when I passed by you, I saw you as a nation that needed help. And it was my job and my endeavor to give you what you need so that you can come up out of where, where you were and to prosper and to grow into what I needed you to grow into. Go ahead and read. 
I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, uh -huh. and thou hast increased and waxen great, uh -huh. and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, where thou was naked and bare. So you, it looks like you're shaping up into the woman that I need for you to be. Your breasts are fashioned. Your hair is like I want it. You got excellent ornaments. Go ahead and read. Now when I pass by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. Uh -huh. And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee and entered in a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou became as mine. So I took you in as a people. I spread myself over you, and like, and you became my woman. I went in unto you with my laws and my statutes and my judgments, and I made you look good. Go ahead and read. Then washed I thee with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. So if you haven't noticed it, yes, sisters and brothers, the Lord is likening, to it, likening his relationship with us as a relationship that a man would have with a woman. You know, I, 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 I use this scripture sometimes when I'm trying to talk about relationships sometimes. How much the man put into that woman. How much he called that woman. How much he revered that woman. And, 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 and moved her in the direction where she would be pleasing into his sight and his sight being God's sight. Go ahead and read. I clothed thee also with broidered work, mm -hmm. and shod thee with badger skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thine ears, and a beautiful crown upon thine head. He said, I did all this stuff for you trying to get you, gave you the best of everything. Go ahead and read. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. So Israel was at a point, sisters and brothers, where they were right where the Lord wanted them. He treated his woman like gold. And as a side note, brothers, try to mimic the Lord right here. He treated her like gold. Keep reading. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. So thy renown is the knowledge of you and how beautiful you were went forth among the nations. Go ahead. For it was perfect through my com comeliness which I had put upon thee, saith the Lord God. So I gave you all of this. I set you up. I cleaned you up. I gave you everything that you need so that you could be my woman, my nation. You were beautiful to everybody else, but you was mine. Amen. You were mine. My statutes, my laws. The, thing, the way I wanted to do things, I had you set up right where you wanted to, where I wanted you to be. But what happened? But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and played the harlot because of thy renown. You played the harlot. You played me. You played me. Go ahead and read. And poured out thy fornications on everyone that passed by. His it was. His it was. You gave it to anybody who wanted it. It was his. Go ahead. And of thy garments thou didst take, and deckest thy high places with divers colors, and played the harlot upon, thereupon. The like thing shall not come, neither shall it be so. Thou hast also taken thine, thy fi fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I have given thee, and made to thyself images of men. Images of men, go ahead. And didst commit whoredom with them. And did commit whoredom. I set you up. I set you apart from unbelievers. But you fell back. You fell back into the abyss, sisters and brothers, into an area that I did not want you to go. In other words, you, you started putting on the strange apparel that I didn't know about. I didn't buy that. I didn't buy the way that you were acting. I didn't buy all the foolishness that you are clothed with right now. Matter of fact, my brother, go to, uh, let's go to Zephaniah. And 
Let's pick it up, my brother. We're going to read 7 through 9. Zephaniah 7 through 9. 7 through 9. We're coming down on the, on, on the, on the rough side of the mountain now. We, we, we downhill. Zephaniah 1, verse 7. The word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah, son of Cushai. We're going to do uh, first chapter, verse 7. Oh, seven, seven, seven. Okay, gotcha. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Mm -hmm. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. He said all such that are clothed, sister and brothers, with strange apparel. Go ahead and read in the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. In other words, sisters and brothers, you have to have on that fine linen that it talked about in Revelation, the 19th chapter. And that fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. You got you to gotta hold yourself back from dealing with the other nations. You can't let nothing separate you from the word of God. Can't be nobody. Can't be your mama. Can't be your brothers or sisters. You know, my mother is not in this truth, but it seemed like she might be turning the corner. Knowing that I, she said, I'm proud of your son. I'm proud of you. Right. She still lives. She's 79 years old. She's still living, and she's still supporting everything that I do. Right. One of the greatest things I ever heard coming out, coming out of her mouth, I, I usually walk my neighborhood. It's about two and a half, three miles. I walk it probably five days a week, and I'm talking to her on the phone. And I'm, I'm like, it's like I'm giving her a Bible study. It, it just comes out of nowhere. And she, told, she, she, she quoted back to me. She said, because you know people be saying that folks, in there, ain't nobody in heaven right now. I said, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody in heaven. You in the ground. I said, you been listening, mommy. <laughs> That's what I call them. I'm the oldest, but I'm the only one that calls her mommy. I still call her mommy. You've been listening to what I'm saying. I sure have. <laughs> so there, there, there is hope, sisters and brothers. There is hope. We're going to go real quick, if we will, to Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, chapter eight. Make sure that my, 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 my talking is not in vain. I think I might, I might, I might have her. Romans 8 chapter, and let's pick that up if we will, at verse 34. Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Uh-huh, read. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now let's think about the things, sister and brothers, that happened to Job. Go ahead. Shall tribulation? Shall tribulation or separate us from the from from, um, from the love of Christ? No. Read. Or distress? Ha shall distress? We're gonna have some distressful times and some distressful days. Go ahead. Or persecution? Are we gonna worry about what other what everybody else doing that they persecuting us for standing our ground for serving God? Read. Or famine. Or famine. Go ahead. Or nakedness. Or nakedness. Or peril. Uh-huh. Or sword. Is that going to separate us, sisters and brothers? God forbid. Go ahead and read. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. We are killed all the day long, sisters and brothers, because we're killing the, 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 we're killing the sin out of our minds. We are making the transition to live that righteous life that Job lived, sisters and brothers, because when his stuff was taken from him, he didn't miss a beat. He didn't miss a beat. Go ahead and read. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors through all of the things that we go through, through the nakedness, through the persecution, through the distress, through the famine, through the peril. We are more than conquerors. Go ahead. For I am, for I am persuaded that neither death... Neither death nor life, nor life, 
nor angels, nor angels, nor principalities, uh huh, nor powers. Go ahead. Nor things present, nor things present, nor things to come, nor things to come, nor height, uh huh, nor depth. Go ahead. Nor any other creature, uh huh, shall what? Shall be able to separate us from the love of God. From the love of God, nothing. Don't let nothing separate you from the love of God. Nobody, not your husband, not your wife. Nothing, nobody, let it, let it suffer, uh, separate you from the love of God. Go ahead. Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's go, if we will, real quick to uh, 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. First Timothy 4. And let's pick that up, my brother, at uh, verse 9. 4 and 9. Hold on one second. My page is kind of stuck. That's all right. First, First Timothy, Timothy the fourth chapter. I'm going to read 9 through 12. Go ahead. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception. For therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Especially of those that believe. We labor, we do the work, and we suffer reproach as a result of that, but we trust in the living God. Go ahead and read. These things command and teach. Uh huh. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. He said, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in the word, in word, in our conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. A lot of this stuff, sisters and brothers, is encompassing the four things that I pointed out that Job was doing. Right. The Bible is tight from front to back. And it's consistent with what God wants us to do in all of his prophets and, uh, and his disciples. Go ahead and read. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. That's good right there, my brother. Let's go, if we will, to Titus. Titus, the second chapter. Matter of fact, uh, not, not Titus. Um, let's, go to, let's go to Luke. Luke, the sixth chapter. Luke, chapter six. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. And we want to pick that up, my brother, verses, verse 20. We'll read 20 through 23. Okay, go ahead. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when ye and when they shall separate you from their company. When they shall separate you from their company, you might call that a blessing. But some people do that. I don't need you bringing me down anyway. Go ahead and read. And shall reproach you uh -huh. and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. He said, and, and cast out your name for evil. A lot of y'all around people, you work with people that backstab you, Amen. throw your name all over the place, trying to destroy you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you got God on your side. Go ahead and read. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did the fathers unto the prophets. Did the fathers unto the prophets. Let's go, my brother, if we will, to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. And after that, we have two more after that. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Ephesians 5, and uh, read verse... 6 through 11. All right, my brother. Let no man deceive you with vain words. 
For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Uh-huh, go ahead. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Don't be partakers with them. Go ahead. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. And, don't, and, and look, at, look at it, sisters and brothers. All of us were in the dark before. Certain things we didn't know. We didn't even know what we really needed to do to please God. But now that you are in the light, walk like you are in the light. Go ahead. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. Go ahead. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Uh-huh. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Go ahead. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. He said have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. If we go back to Job, which one is that? A true and evil. As chew evil, hate evil. Don't have, any, don't, ha don't have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Go ahead. But rather reprove them. Reprove them. Don't let up there and sit. Well, you know, that's just how he is. No. In your presence, if it's going to affect you and it's affecting other people that see that person, you got to call it out. Now, that's the way to do it. You got to call it out as a servant of God. Can't sit up there and let folks do it. Well, you know. Especially if it's affecting you and your circle and the people right with you. Go ahead and read, my brother. What, what verse was that? Uh, that was 11. Man, that was 11. 11 right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Let's go, if we will, to uh, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. And let's start that out at verse 1. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Hold on one second. First Thessalonians 5. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night for those who, who, who don't ultimately have understanding. But keep on reading. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon thee. Come cometh upon, cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And they shall not escape. In other words, sisters and brothers, those who are the children of light, just stay ready, be ready, know that anything could pop off, which will be the beginning of things. You know, I remember when they had 9-11, you know, and people were like, oh, my God, is this the coming of the Lord? No, it ain't. <laughs> We know it ain't. It might be havoc in New York and maybe some other places around the country, but no, this ain't it. It's bad, but this ain't it. <laughs> Go ahead and read. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. That's what I was saying earlier. We're not in darkness, that the day of the Lord should overtake us as a thief, because we know that there are certain signs. We know that a temple has to be built. We know all these things have to come to pass. So as bad as it might get, it don't come to us like a thief in the night, because we read the book. Go ahead and read. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Uh -huh. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. He said, let us watch, sisters and brothers, and be sober-minded. Be cognizant of what's going on around you, the people that are around you, that we don't start to kind of dissolve ourselves into the mundane, uh, the mundane ways of wickedness. In other words, before you know it, don't find yourself doing things that everybody else is, is doing. You got to separate yourself. Go ahead and read. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Uh huh. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastpl breastplate of faith of and faith love. faith and love. And love. Go ahead. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Uh-huh. 
For God has not appointed us to wrath. For God has not appointed us to wrath those who are going to keep his word. We're not appointed to wrath. Go ahead. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. But to obtain salvation to our Lord Jesus, unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's go to the last scripture, if we will. Let's go to Joel. Joel, the second chapter. Joel, the second chapter, and I want you to pick it up at verse 1, and we're going to skip from 1 to 10. Okay, go ahead. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. For the day of the Lord is coming, sisters and brothers, it is nigh at hand. Like brother C me and Brother Cecil was talking about earlier, oh, the time is near. It's near, sisters and brothers. It's near. Stuff is lining up. Skip down, if you will, to verse 10. The earth shall quake before them. Uh -huh. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. Mm -hmm. For he is strong that ex executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide it? He said, who can abide in it? It's going to be those sisters and brothers who took the time out to separate themselves, to separate themselves and, and, and not to be unequally yoked with the world and the things of the world. Keep reading. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart. Turn now with all your heart and Look. with fasting uh -huh. and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Uh -huh. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Go ahead. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber. He said, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber. And the bride out of a closet. And the bride out of a closet. The bride in the closet, sisters and brothers, is you and me. It's going to come a time where they're going to know who you are. And they're going to know that you are God's people. Because of, the, uh, because of the righteousness, because of the fine linen that you've been wearing, the sacrifices that you made, the willingness to be separate from everybody else, and the willingness to go down that narrow road where we read in uh, uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter, 13th verse, where it says, and few there be that find it. You're going to come out of the closet, but you got to separate yourself now. You got to fight the fight. You got to be willing to wage spiritual warfare because everything is done in the mind. Spiritual warfare is a, is a war for the control of the mind because what the mind takes in, the body performs. And that's what we got to do. We got to make sure that we separate ourselves from everything else so that we are not unequally yoked but still carrying the mantle of being the priest of God and the kings of God right. so that we can usher in the word of God to the world, and we do that by separating ourselves and being that light upon a hill. So I thank you for your time.